Showtime! The Capital G Show starts right now. In the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, we have thousands of monster cards. These span all types of different themes and fictional creatures, but what a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! duelists don't know is that some of your favorite and most popular cards are actually based on real-life people. From great war generals and aviators to downright infamous criminals, Yu-Gi-Oh! has been doing this for well over a decade without many noticing. In this video, I'll be chronicling 10 cards that are based on real-life people and give a brief description of who those people actually were. Now, like to point out I'll be excluding the DDD archetype specifically and that's because while many of those cards are based on famous historical figures like Julius Caesar and Alexander the Great the cards bear no actual resemblance to the people that they're referencing and are kind of just in name only so they don't align with the spirit of the video let's begin number one silver sentinel based on Simo Haya no not that Simo remember back in the day when Yu-Gi-Oh was all guns bad and they were always getting sensitive out of the TCG and the dub version of the anime, well at some point during the Zexo era, Konami just stopped caring. I say that because this card not only features a Remington 700 sniper rifle in the artwork, but it's based on a famous Finnish sniper. In fact, you could say that Simo Haya is probably the most deadly sniper who ever lived, racking up an unbelievable 705 kills in a single year. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't even sound real, but that's just how good this guy was. Super Sentinel's effect also references snipers and how they camouflage themselves while lying in wait for their enemy to appear, striking the enemy dead when they least expect it and aren't prepared for an attack. Kudos to Konami because this is basically a double reference. Number two, Saint Joan and Guardian Angel Joan, based on Joan of Arc. There's actually a couple more monsters that directly reference Joan of Arc, but these are probably the best too. Most know the legend of the French war heroine Joan of Arc. Her role was vital in a war between France and England that spanned over 100 years, and her tragic death by burning at the stake at the young age of just 19 years old. These cards not only reference Joan during her time spent as a soldier in the French Rebellion, but also her fabled ascension to heaven after death. After all, Joan would often claim to see visions sent to her by the Archangel Michael. The fusion materials of Saint Joan are also related to Joan of Arc. The Forgiven Maiden is a nod to her nickname, the Maiden of Orleans, and Dark Lord Marie is related to the banner Joan carried into battle that bared the words Jesus and Mary. Number three, Shiba Warrior Taro, based on Kazuki Takahashi's dog, Taro. All right, all right, I know what you're thinking. This certainly isn't a person, Cap G, and you're correct. He's a dog, but Shiba Warrior Taro is based on a real-life dog. This dog just so happens to be under the care of the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! Takahashi. This shouldn't be all that shocking. Takahashi has illustrated dozens of cards post the DM era. Some are newer versions of his most iconic cards, like Magi Magi Magician Gao, and and some are also just dedicated to his dog. There really isn't much more than that. Shibas are a super popular breed of dog in Japan, and Takahashi clearly loves his. Number four, Goblin Bird, based on Charles Lindbergh. This is pretty elementary, as its name is a Porsche Manto of Goblin and Lindbergh's last name. Based on my research, Charles Lindbergh might be the most famous person on this list. Starting out as a simple U.S. airmail pilot from Detroit, Michigan, he skyrocketed to world famous after being the first pilot in history to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. This was a remarkable accomplishment as it saw Lindbergh fly from New York to Paris nonstop, spanning 33 and a half hours and a ridiculous 3,600 miles all by himself. Lindbergh was a military officer, inventor, and activist who was also unfortunately known for the infamous Lindbergh baby kidnapping that saw his newborn son kidnap and murdered in 1932. At the time, the media largely considered it the crime of the century. Century. Honestly, I could probably go on for another five or ten minutes about Lindbergh, but let's just leave it there. Number five, Armed Samurai Benkai, based on Saito Mayashiba Benkai. Meet the biggest badass on this list. And that's saying something because we started with a sniper who killed over 700 guys in a single year. Benkai was the real freaking deal. Now, unfortunately, because he lived in the 1100s, information surrounding Benkai and his life are not the most reliable as many believed he was actually the child of a temple god and a half demon, but to me, that pretty much describes just how strong this guy really was. If you've ever seen the anime Berserk, Benkai was kind of like a real life version of Guts. 
Benkai was said to have once defeated 200 men in a single battle. He also won 999 straight duels against samurai warriors who he deemed arrogant and unworthy before ever suffering a single defeat. In the end, it took a whopping 300 armed soldiers to take Benkai down and they were actually afraid to face him head to head, fearing it would be suicide. Instead, they fired arrows across the bridge to kill him, but even those couldn't physically bring him down and he famously died a standing death. Number 6, Blood Me Fist, or Crimson Me Fist in the 5D's anime, based on Jack the Ripper. Yep, we've officially entered murderers and psychopath territory on this list. Keep in mind, people, this is a children's card game. Jack the Ripper was a vile and violent serial killer who terrorized the eastern slums of London from 1888 to 1891. He had almost a dozen victims and mainly targeted, let's just say, women of the night, because I'm not trying to get demonetized over suggestive themes here. Jack did all types of gruesome surgeries on his victims, which led some to believe that he had a background in the medical field. Blood Mephist's name is not only in relation to blood, but also its attire matches the style of English men in the early 1900s. Number 7, Alistair the Invoker, based on Alistair Crowley. Turns out everyone's favorite fusion boy was actually a real life occultist. That means people who believe in the supernatural and the power of magic. These people generally practice witchcraft, alchemy, sorcery, and all types of crazy stuff. Alistair dabbled in all of these and more. In fact, he even created his own religion called the Alma. Alistair believed that he was a prophet sent to guide humanity into the Aeon of Horus. He's actually been described as the most wicked man in the world and even a Satanist by many in the press. And believe me, he was involved in a lot of stuff that probably isn't appropriate for any audience to hear about. I could go on, but I think you get the general idea. Just know that not only is Alistair based on him, but the entire invoked archetype is largely referencing what he was trying to accomplish in his life. Number 8, Outstanding Dog Moran, based on Hachiko. You probably didn't expect any dogs on this list, and then when you're almost at the end, boom, I sneak in another one. Meet the most loyal doggo in history. Hachiko was a Japanese dog born in Odate in 1923. When he was one years old, he was brought to live in Shibuya, Tokyo by the Japanese professor Hida Saburo Ono. Every day, Hachiko would walk to Shibuya Station to meet up with Ono after work to walk home with him. This went on for over two full years, and when Ono suddenly died at work from a brain hemorrhage, Hachiko continued to wait at the station every single day for Ono to return. This continued for another decade up until the day Hachiko died. During his life, Hachiko was held in high regard for his loyalty and fidelity, and years after his death, even into modern history, he's appeared in books, magazines, and even Japanese pop culture. Number 9, Tomohiro the Mountain Warrior, Yasushi the Skull Knight, and Masahiro the Dark Clown. Okay, this is kind of weird and maybe shouldn't even make the list. These are real cards based on real people, but they're also based on other cards. Confused yet? To put it in simplest terms, these cards are technically based on Mountain Warrior, Skull Knights, and Saki the Dark Clown. However, either as a meme, a joke, or I guess just to be weird, Konami actually gave these cards away as tournament prizes at the Japanese second national tournament in 2001. The troll part is each card is named after and features the face of a finalist of the first national tournament the prior year. Kind of interesting to think that the players the cards were actually based on probably don't actually own the cards themselves. Number 10, Tyler the Great Warrior based on Tyler Gressel. This is one of Yu-Gi-Oh's most awesome stories. In 2002, Tyler Gressel was a huge Yu-Gi-Oh fan that sadly was diagnosed with a rare liver cancer. By all reports at the time, things were looking incredibly dire and the outlook on Tyra's life was not very good. Through the Make-A-Wish Foundation, 4Kids Entertainment actually gave Tyler the opportunity to design his own Yu-Gi-Oh card. They created his vision and brought it to life, gave him a physical copy of the card, and even invited him to the 4Kids headquarters in New York, New York. Best of all, our story actually has a happy ending as Tyler actually survived the cancer and made a full recovery. The card was named after Tyler and designed to look like Trunks from Dragon Ball Z, but you can argue that the spirit of the character belongs to Tyler himself as 
as well. Anyways, that's my list. What did you guys think? If you disagreed or agreed with anything, or maybe if I missed out on any real life people who have had Yu-Gi-Oh cards based on them, you leave that in the comment section below. And if you guys enjoyed this type of video, please, please, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me know that you guys enjoy this type of content and it also helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos.